Hey, Bible lovers, this turned out to be one of my favorite sessions of the Let's Talk Rebinds series with Daniel of Logos Rebinding and John of ICA Bibles. And it's really how they shared their origin story as to how they got into rebinding Bibles and kind of how this whole process started for them. So check it out. I remember having my Bible that was coming apart and I loved it so much, but I knew it wasn't going to last and I didn't want to get to it and, and do all my highlighting and all my notes in it. So I, I immediately started looking for something that would last. And I remember my wife and I standing in a bookstore and I was holding this. It was some premium crossway ESV. It was like 250 bucks. And we sat there for a couple of hours debating whether or not we could afford to get this for me. And we wound up not getting it. Uh, and it, it wasn't a rebind. It was, it was kind of a middle of the road thing. And, but I wanted it so much. And I remember the feeling of being drawn to it so much by something that, that held the word of God that was actually uh, felt like quality work and quality materials and something that would last and something that, that I didn't have to use, you know, both hands and elbows to hold open on the table. And, uh, and the reason that I got into rebinding was when I couldn't afford uh, a nice Bible, my best friend bought me might even have to, I don't know if you can shout out other people. I guess you can. My best friend bought me a PTL and I just absolutely couldn't believe it. I'd never held something like that before. It far surpassed any premium factory Bible I even could imagine in the way it felt and looked. And I didn't know rebinds existed. Like uh, I think I heard James White talk about Jeffrey once and I, did, I didn't even know this was a thing. And I immediately fell in love with the, with the way that it made me feel for someone to love me that much and to have the word of God wrapped in, in such quality and long lasting materials and workmanship. So uh, I, like I said, I'll be sad the day that I can't do it anymore because yeah. uh, that's 100% the reason that I do it. Yeah. Me too. Definitely. Are you going to add Daniel? Uh, I was, I was going to say, I definitely your origin story, re rebind origin story uh, is awesome to hear. My, my dad's, well-loved preaching Bible for probably 30 years needed to be rebound. And I sent it to uh, Jeff Putnam, uh, who sadly passed away yeah. uh, recently, <clears throat> I guess maybe six months ago or so. Um, but anyways, got it, got it rebound. And so that kind of lit a fire under me for some of the Bibles that I had. And, um, you know, I was like, I can't re I can't afford to get my own rebound. So I'm going to just start trying to do this. And, um, so really, it's it's kind of just the joy of being able to uh, to get an old Bible and and to fix it up for somebody. Not necessarily because it'll look good, um, because it but because it will last. <laughs> um, it's going back to it. You know, we want to make the them bulletproof and beautiful um, at the same time. So um, it's just a really cool and amazing uh, amazing privilege to have for for a lot of a lot of people. So absolutely, this yeah, one. Yeah. This one will be mine until I pass it down to my kids. That's awesome. And it's, and it's the whole reason why I do this. So I hope you enjoyed that story of how John and Daniel both kind of entered the world of rebinding and how they both, interestingly enough, did it because they couldn't afford to get rebinds done for themselves. So pretty neat story. There you have it. Keep calm. Jesus on.